Our topic is, of course, Simon Magus. It's an endless topic, friends and brethren, because uh, Simon had a moment of recognition, similar to Janus and Jambres, those two Egyptians who worked at the time of Moses with 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 uh, with, with Pharaoh. So they had a moment of recognition, similar to James and Jambres, when Simon saw the miracles performed by Philip and the giving of the Holy Spirit by Peter and John which he witnessed in Acts chapter 8, verse 13. Uh, let us, even though I think we might have read it already, let's just, uh, let us just be reminded once again of what was so impressive to Simon Magus. Because we're talking of the New Testament church, we're talking about the New Testament history, we're talking about things pertaining to our forefathers in the faith. So we are in the book of Acts, and we should go to chapter 8, 8 and verse 13. And I'm wondering what the version would be the best. English Standard Version sometimes is very good, so I'll just read from that one. So even Simon, verse 13, himself believed, and after being baptized, he continued with Philip. And seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. Now, when the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. In other words, they were only immersed for the remission of their sins in the name of the Lord Jesus. And of course, by being immersed at that moment, the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed them from all sin, and they were now ready as totally clean vessels to receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 17, the day laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that Spirit was given through the laying on hands of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, and this is, brethren, one of the greatest uh, prophecies of all time, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, and here is the prophecy of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. And the prophecy is the pinnacle of this prophecy, verse 23, For I see that you are in the goal of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And so, uh, Simon believed, we read in verse 13, but we also read in verse 21 that his heart was not right in the sight of God, because he was read in verse 23, poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. He simply did not wish to serve the Lord. Now, Peter's recognition of Simon's heart was, brethren, very insightful, and this attitude, this attitude was so common to other heretics that the early church had to deal with. You know, Paul c commented that people would come into contact with Timothy, people who are lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, and who have a form of piety but deny its power. Just like James and Jambres of Egypt, those people would have corrupt minds, having the characteristics described in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 to 4, and 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 to 5. And those people will resist the truth. And I'm mentioning that because history is repeating itself, and brethren, we are seeing the same phenomena in our time. Yet Paul said, they will advance no farther, for their folly will be manifest to all, as was that of James and Jambres when Egypt was destroyed by the plagues in the Red Sea. Let's go to Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. And let's see verse, that should be verse 9, but here it is in verse 8. Just as James and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men also oppose the truth, men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. But they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all. So was that of those two men. You, however, exhorts Paul, Timothy and us, I have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me in Antioch and Iconium and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured. Yet from them all the Lord rescued me. 
So the life of the Apostle Paul was very tough, if you think about it. But brethren, nevertheless, he, God rescued him from all he endured to the end and finished the race very successfully. He did not allow, not allowing anyone, as the, uh, as the admonition of Jesus Christ is to the Philadelphian church, not allowing anyone to take away his crown. Now brethren, one technique of these heretics that Paul warned Timothy about was the leading captive of the gullible, especially those loaded down with sins. You find it in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. Please go to verse 6 and 7, and it says, For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Now, Jerome, one of those church commentators, he wrote that it was common for Simon Magus and the heretics that followed him to use women for fornication and other purposes. Rather than usually when it comes to uh, false worship, false teachings, when it comes to pagan religion, it's not uncommon to have the uh, fornication and uh, all kinds of all kinds of uh, what shall I say lewd things I know many of you often wonder how come that people can be so cruel how come people can be so lewd how come brethren I keep telling you all the time there is a huge difference between pagans and Israelites uh, that is there is a huge difference a huge gap between pagan mindset and Israelitish mindset brethren you see, pagan mindset is ruthless, selfish, reckless, and doesn't think and doesn't care about the suffering of living creatures. I mean, as a living creatures, I mean animals and humans alike. The Israelite mindset is totally different. Even your countries in which you live have got very humane laws and regulations, in some cases, so humane that you see the southern border of the United States is just like an open, like an open gate so anybody can enter in, which is totally wrong, but, but it is as it is. And you often cannot understand how can people be so cruel in other nations? How can people be so reckless? How can people, brethren, that's because of the difference, huge, humongous difference between the minds of pagans and the minds of Israelites. Israelitish people are like, you know, like, 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 they're so sensitive, they're so easily touched by suffering, other suffering, and so on. Pagans are nothing alike, brethren. Pagans are nothing alike. They don't care. All that they care is about their own prestige, usually money and power. That's what pagans are all after. Brethren, do not be surprised. Do not be surprised because it's and you wonder, how come that those nations, well, they, how come? The answer is they're pagans. They've got not, they have got not Israelitish mindset. Uh, so as I said, Jerome wrote that it was common for Simon and the heretics that followed him to use women for fornication and other purposes. And I'm quoting now from Jerome. What object is served by gullible women laden with sins, carried about with every wind of doctrine, he ever learning and ever able to come to the knowledge of the truth? We have that question in Second Timothy, and similar question in Ephesians chapter four, verse fourteen. Or how is the cause helped by the men who dance attendance upon these men with itching ears? Those who have itching ears, it's uh, it's uh, mentioned in Second Timothy chapter four, verse three. They know neither how to hear nor how to speak. They confound all the mire with new cement, and as Ezekiel says, they paint a wall with untempered mortar, so that when the truth comes in a shower, they're brought to naught. Paying that, you might remember, we, we, we covered that when we, cover, we were covering the book of Ezekiel. We covered that, painting a wall with untempered mortar in Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 10 through 16. When Ezekiel accuses the leaders of, 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 of Israelites, or the ten tribes, that they, you know, paint the wall with untempered mortar, 
and that wall is so weak and it cannot stand against the counsel of God and against what God prophesied and it's going to fall. Now, uh, Jerome continues, as examples of this, it was with, with the help of the harlot Helena that Simon Magus founded his sect. Bands of women accompanied Nicholas of Antioch, who is mentioned, by the way, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, the divisor of all uncleanness. Now, let me just stay with this Nicholas of Antioch. Brethren, it's not Nicholas, it's not the deacon. There was one deacon called Nicholas, but that is not what some parts of Christianity wrongly believe that the Nicolaitans mentioned in Revelation chapter 4, chapter 2, that is, are the followers of Deacon Nicholas. No, brethren, that's not the case. There was a follower of Simon Magus, Nicholas of Antioch in Syria, and he is the one mentioned in Revelation chapter 2. Here, his followers are mentioned there, and as far as I remember, as far as I can remember the church history, the Apostle Peter first went to Antioch, to confront this demonic preacher and to uh, stop his toxic influence. And then Nicholas, as far as I remember, then after Antioch he went to Rome. Of course, where else could he go but to the very, very worldwide seat of all paganism? So relating to Nicolaitis, they're not followers of Deacon Nicholas. No, brethren, it's uh, Nicholas of Antioch, the uh, follower of Simon Magus. So, Jerome tells us that uh, Nicholas of Antioch had bands of women that accompanied him. Apelis, one of those followers of Simon Magus, possessed in Philomena, an associate in his false doctrines. Montanus, Montanus, that mouthpiece of an unclean spirit, says Jerome, used two rich and high-born ladies, Prisca and Maximilla, first to bribe and then to pervert many churches. Notice this, to bribe and then to pervert many churches. <laughs> yes, some people are brethren there to be bribed. Some people just preach wrong doctrines for money. This Ramsey wrote about such people in his autobiography. If something brings money, in, why not? That's how people reason. That's how they make compromise. But you see, brother, those people crept in the church unaware. <laughs> they crept in church unaware and then over the time completely corrupted and converted and, and, and turned around the whole church. And then by the second century, when we take a look at the church, we see something completely else, different. No longer church in, in, in Jerusalem, preaching true doctrines. We see paganized harlot in the book of Revelation chapter 17, preaching perverted, uh, watered down, polluted doctrines of mixture of paganism and Christianity. And in two years, as Jamie uh, reminded us, 2025, brethren, we, uh, we checked, you see, it is amazing, he reminded us this morning, last night, it was Friday night, so the church congregation here spent some time discussing certain matters in the Bible, namely, there appeared on TikTok, uh, someone's saying about not mixing wool, uh, uh, wool and, uh, and cotton, and that person was mentioning some frequencies that uh, cotton has and wool has and the frequencies would just kill one another, so it's zero. That he mentions certain frequencies of living bodies, certain frequencies of dead body, whatever. But we haven't found any scientific support for what this person was saying, so we're not going to bother you with that. But we discussed that last night and other issues. And we also checked the calendar. In 2025, indeed, it will be 1,700 anniversary of the Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea organized and led by Constantine the Great. The famous Council of Nicaea which abolished the most solemn ordinance for New Testament Christians called the uh, New Testament Passover and promoted the most and the greatest of all abominations from the book of Ezekiel chapter 8, which was worship of sun or Sunday 
Sunday, the resurrection of the sun, or Easter. So we are approaching that in about two years. And yes, it's very possible that all these ecumenical Christians will be celebrating it greatly and promoting its ecumenical unity, as Jamie reminded us of that. In the meantime, we need to know, brethren, where did it all start? It started all with Simon Magus, brethren, with Simon Magus, him and his doctrines and his teachings. And just as Jesus began his public ministry, so Simon Magus began to make his move for power by taking over the leadership of a group of the disciples of John the Baptist in Samaria. At the end of his public ministry, Jesus had warned his followers about the coming influence of Simon and his cohorts in the following words, Matthew chapter 24, Matthew 24, verse 23. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Brethren, that's why I've chosen this topic. Even the elect can be deceived if they are not careful, if they do not know how to discern something that almost seems to be right from what is really right. See, I've told you beforehand, says Jesus Christ, Matthew 24, verse 23, 24 and 25. The De Clementine homilies describe Simon's move for power in trying to take over after the death of John the Baptist. Here is the description. John the Baptist, the forerunner of our Lord, had 30 chief men, as the Lord had 12 apostles. But of these 30, the first and the most esteemed by John the Baptist was Simon. And the reason of his not being chief after the death of John was as follows. And now... Now, uh, 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 Clementine tells us what it is. Listen to this. This is better part of the New Testament history. Or if you want to see, or if you want to term it the apostasy after all. But the apostasy was instigated by Simon Magus and his followers. That's why we have been in, in, informed in the book of Revelation and warned against those people. While Simon was absent in Egypt, writes now, uh, writes the Clement, Clementine homilist, while Simon was absent in Egypt for the practice of magic, John was beheaded. Dositheus, desiring the leadership, lied and said that Simon was dead and thus succeeded to the seat. But Simon returned not, not long after. When he met with Dositheus, he did not demand the first place. Instead, with pretended friendship, he gave himself for a while to the second place under Dositheus. But after a few days, among the thirty fellow disciples, he began to malign Dositheus as not delivering instructions correctly. Simon said that Dositheus did this not through unwillingness to deliver them correctly, but through ignorance. On one occasion, Dositheus, perceiving that, his, that this artful accusation of Simon was dissipating many people's opinion of him, came in a rage to the usual place of beating, and finding Simon, struck him with a staff. But it seemed to pass through the body of Simon as if he had not, as if he had been smoke. Thereupon, Dositheus, being confounded, said to him, "If you are the standing one, I also will worship you." Then Simon said that he was, and Dositheus, knowing that he himself was not the standing one, fell down and worshipped Simon, associating himself with the twenty-nine chiefs. Dositheus raised Simon to his own place of repute, and thus. Not many days after, Dositheus himself, while he, Simon, stood, fell down and died. Now, of course, brethren, one might wonder whether Simon had a hand in Dositheus' death, such as by poison, we don't know, perhaps yes, perhaps no. But Clementine tells us that Simon then went about in company with Helena. And uh, you need to know, brethren, this Helena is sometimes also called Luna from which we derive the words lunar, lunar calendar, for example, Luna, the moon. So we always have the sun and moon and then the, 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 the hosts of heaven that were always worshipped by the pagans and apostate Israelites. So knowing that, obviously, Simon Magus was trying to gain more followers. And so, 
he went about in company with Helena, stirring up the people, writes Clementine. He said that he had brought down this Helena from the highest heavens to the world. Being queen, she was the all-bearing being and wisdom for whose sake the Greeks and barbarians fought, having before their eyes but an image of truth. For she, who really is the truth, was then with the chief God. End of the quote. Just listen, brethren, and just draw lines with all kinds of falsifications that we are, we are, we are witnessing in the nominal Christianity. Now, regarding Helena, Irenaeus, one of those church commentators, he stated that Helena was the first conception of Simon's mind, by which in the beginning he conceived in his mind the thought of forming angels and archangels. She, he said, created the angels who were responsible for the law of Moses. Simon stated that these laws were only uh, bring men into bondage, but he saves men by grace. Therefore, men can receive and men can disregard the law of Moses once they have accepted Simon's grace. As a result, there was flagrant disregard for the Mosaic law among Simon's believers, uh, sorry, among Simon's believers or Simon's followers, who in some places were called Gnostics and who were condemned by the apostles for such lawless practices like Revelation 2 verse 14 to 15. Irenaeus stated, now here is another statement of Irenaeus in his book Against Heresies, chapter 1, uh, and uh, uh, chapter 1, paragraph 23 and uh, lines 2 to 4, here near stated from, For this Helena came forth from him, and comprehending the will of her father, descended from heaven to the lower regions of space, and generated angels and powers. Pay attention to all of this, brethren, because all this is indeed condemned in the Bible. In the book of Colossians, you have those who condemn those who have the cult of angels, brethren. And we wouldn't understand what the Apostle Paul wrote to us if we don't know this background, you see. So she generated angels and powers, but after she had produced them, they detained her through motives of jealousy because they were unwilling to be looked upon as the progeny of any other being. She suffered all kinds of scorn from them so that she could not return upwards to her father, but was even shut up in a human body and for ages passed in succession from one female body to another as from, uh, as from vessel to vessel. She was, for example, in that Helen, on whose account the Trojan War was undertaken, thus she, passing from body to body and suffering insults in every one of them, at least became a common prostitute, and she it was that was meant by the lost sheep. Oh, please, end of the quote. <laughs> Just listen to how perverted was this false religion right in the first century, right at the beginning of the New Testament New Testament Church, of which we are continuation. Now, another quote. For this purpose, then, he had come that he might win her first and free her from slavery, while she conferred salvation upon men by making himself known to him. Since the angels ruled the world in an evil manner, because each one of them coveted the principal power for himself, he had come to amend matters. He had descended and transfigured so that he might appear among men to be a man while yet he was not a man so he comes as a man but yet he was not a man and then when you read this you can understand better why the apostle Paul wrote something in his uh, first epistle and thus he was thought to have suffered in Judea by being crucified what he had not suffered you see see how they lie brethren they've got these false or lying doctrines even today Moreover, the prophets uttered their predictions under the inspiration of those angels who formed the world, for which reason those who placed their trust in him and Helena no longer regarded them, but as being free, live as they please. For men are saved through his grace and not on account of their own righteous actions. Just listen to this perversion of the truth, brethren. For such deeds are not righteous in the nature of things, 
but by mere accident, just as those angels who made the world have thought fit to constitute laws and precepts to bring men into bondage. On this account, he pledged himself that the world should be dissolved and that those who are his should be freed from the rule of them who made the world. Because the angels supposedly made this material evil world, you see. Thus then, the mystic priests belonging to his to the sect both lead profligate lives and practice magical arts, each one to the extent of his ability. They use exorcism and incantations, love potions too, and charms, as well as those beings who are called familiar and dream senders, and whatever other curious arts can be uh, had recourse to, are eagerly pressed into their service. They also have an image of Simon, fashioned after the likeness of Jupiter, and another of Helena, in the shape of Minerva, and these they worship. They are called Simonians, and from them, knowledge, Greek Gnosis, falsely so-called, received its beginning as in the Gnostic sects, as one may learn from even their own assertions and of the quotes. Now, then what happened then? You see, Simon comes together with those uh, 30, and he revealed his heresy to fellow members of the 30, where he claimed to be God and born of a virgin, just like Christ. So we have more falsification. The other members of the 30, including Aquila and Niceta, did not go along with Simon in his heresy, but instead inquired of him as to the extent of his opinions. Simon stated to the 30, do not think that I am a man of your race. I am neither magician, nor lover of Helena, nor son of Antonius. For before my mother, Rachel, and he came together, she, still a virgin, conceived me so that I might appear as a man among men. Therefore I have chosen you first as my friends. Brethren, look at how he is falsifying the New Testament New Testament teachings. We know who said this. To his, uh, to his disciples, it was Jesus Christ. But look at this. Therefore I have chosen you first as my friends for the purpose of trying you that I may place you first in my heavenly places when I shall have proved you. Therefore I have pretended to be a man that I might more closely ascertain if you cherish affection towards me. When Aquila heard that, he judged Simon indeed to be a wretch, yet wondering at his impudence, Aquila blushed for him and at the same time feared lest he should attempt some evil against the thirty. So Aquila beckoned to Niceta to pretend for a little long with him, and said to Simon, Do not be angry with us, corruptible men, or incorruptible God, but rather accept our affection, and our mind willing to know who God is. For we did not know until now who you are, nor did we perceive that you are he whom we were seeking. Oh, how very diplomatic and very subtle, you might say. However, as we spoke these and such things like words, with looks suited to the occasion, the most vain fellow believed us, and being there, thereby the more elated, he added also this, I shall now be propitious to you for the affection which you bear toward me as God, for you loved, you loved me while you did not know me and were seeking me in ignorance. Now then, I shall begin to unfold to you what is true. By my power I once turned air into water, and water again into the blood, and solidified it into flesh, forming a new human creature, a boy, and produced a much nobler work than God the Creator. For he created a man from the earth, but I from air, a far more difficult matter, and again I unmade him and restored him to air, but not until I had placed his picture and image in my bedchamber as a proof and memorial of my work. Then we understood that he spoke concerning that boy, whose soul, after Simon had slain him by violence, he made use of for those services which he required. Now, brethren, the rest of the thirty were aghast at what Simon rushed had long into, and they were ashamed of their association with him, says the church history, uh, most notably the Clementine Homilies, written, by the way, by Robert St. Donaldson, Clementine Homilies, chapter 2, verse, and uh, uh, page 27-28, and uh, 
it is pseudo, the uh, subtitle is Pseudo Clementine Literature, Anti Nassim Fathers, Volume 8. In any case, in any case, uh, when Aquila, so unlike Simon, those 30 were not of the personal glory and honor. All their efforts were to no avail, however, when Aquila thus spoken continues the uh, Clementine homilies, when Aquila had thus spoken, his brother Niceta said, It is necessary, O Clement, our brother, for me to mention what, what has been left out by Aquila, for in the first place God is witness that we assisted Simon in a no impious work, but that we looked on while he worked. As long as he did harmless things and exhibited them, we were also pleased. But when in order to deceive the godly, he said that he did, by means of Godhead, the things that were done by magic, we no longer endured him, though he made us many promises. He said especially that our statues should be thought worthy of a place in the, temp in the temple, that we should be thought to be gods and should be worshipped, by the multitude, and that we should be honored by kings, and that we should be thought worthy of public honors and, and riches, enriched with boundless wealth. These things, and things greater than these, he promised us on the condition, only that we should associate with him, and keep silence as to the wickedness of his undertaking, so that the scheme of his deceit might succeed. Oh, brethren, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. And sometimes, people, with a scheme, of their deceit to succeed, use bribe. Yes, they use bribe uh, to keep their potential opponents quiet. Then it continues about Simon Mago. Still, we would not consent, but even counseled him to desist from such madness, saying to him, We remember our friendship toward you from our childhood, and out of affection for you, give you good counsel. Desist from this attempt. You cannot be a god. Fear him who is really God. Know that you are a man and that he and that the time of your life is short. Though you should get great riches or even become a king, few things accrue to the short time of your life for enjoyment, and things wickedly gotten soon flee away and procure everlasting punishment for the adventurer. Wherefore we counsel you to fear God by whom the soul of every one must be judged for the, the, the deeds that he had done here. End of the quote. Now Simon thus was quite a contrast to the followers of John the Baptist, of course, because John's preaching awed people coming to him. Tax collectors, soldiers, and other people were so blown away that they simply asked, what shall we do? You find that in Luke chapter 3, verse 10 through 14. And when the Pharisees and Sadducees came to John, he stated, Brood of vipers, the book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 7, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham for these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Matthew chapter 3, verse 7 through 10. And this did not move Simon, brethren. Peter, as Peter correctly observed, his heart was not in the right sight of God. And everything he did with John was a pretense. With John the Baptist, that is. Now, when Peter came to Caesarea to visit Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, he also spoke to a number of the thirty, including Aquila and Niceta, just as Paul, Aquila of the seventy, and Priscilla updated Apollos and the twelve followers of John the Baptist in Ephesus and Corinth in Acts chapter 18, verse 24, and all the way through Acts chapter 19, verse 7. And so Peter did, you know, did so for many of the thirty. Details of this will be of course, seen later, and uh, you can see in uh, in some accounts on Peter's debate with Simon. Now, Justin Martyr, who was also from Samaria, he was born in 114 AD in Flavia, Neapolis, a city of Samaria, which is the modern Nablus, 
in the state of Israel, he addressed the emperor and the Roman senate regarding the influence held by Simon Magus and his followers and how they were called Christians but were not persecuted as the Christians were. Justin Martin writes, After Christ's ascension into heaven, the devils put forward certain men who said that they themselves were gods and they were not only not persecuted by you but even deemed worthy of honor. There was a Samaritan Simon, a native of the village of Quito, who in the reign of Claudius Caesar and in your royal city of Rome did mighty acts of magic by virtue of the art of the devil, devils operating in him. He was considered a god and as a god was honored by you with a statue, which statue was erected on the river Tiber between the two bridges and bore this inscription in the language of Rome, Simone Dei Sancto, to Simon the Holy God. And most all the Samaritans, and a few even of other nations, worship him and acknowledge him as the first god. And a woman, Helena, who went about with him at that time and had formerly been, formerly been a prostitute, they say is the first idea generated by him. Now a few other descriptions. As a man, Minander, also Samaritan of the town Caperetea, a disciple of Simon and inspired by devils we know to have de deceived many while he was in Antioch by his magic magical art he persuaded those who adhered to him that they should never die what a terrible lie friends because the first thing that John said to well that um, Satan said to Eve was you shall surely die so he persuaded those who adhere to him that they should never die. And even now, there are some living who hold this opinion of his. End of the quote. Now here is another quote. And there is Marcion, a man of Pontus, who is even at this day alive and teaching his disciples to believe in some other god greater than the Creator. And he, by the aid of the devils, has caused many of every nation to speak blasphemies and to deny that God is the maker of this universe and to assert that some other being, greater than he, has done great works. All who take their opinions from these men are they are called Christians. And whether they perpetrate those fabulous and shameful deeds, promiscuous intercourse and eating human flesh, we know not, but we do know that they are neither persecuted nor put to death by you, at least on account of their opinions. Now Justin also wrote something interesting uh, in his dialogue with Trifo. Uh, Justin wrote that uh, the Jewish leaders of his day Besides deleting and, cha and changing parts of the scriptures that had, had that had obvious reference to Christ, well, he's uh, uh, just had attitudes similar to Simon Magus. The error on both statement, uh, uh, well, the error on both them for mis misperception of Christ. And the, wild, and, the, and the vast multitude in your nation, meaning Jewish leaders of the second century, are convinced of being of this kind, imbibing doctrines for, of bitterness and related of bitterness and godlessness, but spurning the word, uh, but spurning the word of God. He speaks therefore in the passage related to Judah: a prince shall not fail from Judah, nor a ruler from his ties till that which is laid up for him come and he shall be the expectation of the nations Genesis chapter 49 verse 10 and beyond and it is plain that this was spoken not of Judah but of Christ for all we for all we out of all nations do not expect not, not Judah, but Jesus, who led your fathers out of Egypt. For the prophecy referred even to the advent of Christ. 
until he come for whom this is for whom this is laid up and he shall be the expectation of nations Jesus came therefore as we have shown at length and is expected again to appear above the clouds whose name you profane and labor hard to get it profaned over all the earth what follows indicates that the reference is to Christ for it is and he shall be the expectation of nations therefore I do not possess I do not proceed to have uh, a mere verbal controversy with you writes this author as I have not attempted to establish proof about Christ from the passages of scripture (coughs) which are not admitted by you which I quoted from the words of Jeremiah the prophet and Ezra and David but I have quoted from those which are even now admitted by you which had your teachings comprehended be well assured that you will delete them be well assured that they would have deleted them as they did not as they did those about the death of Isaiah whom you sawed asunder with a wooden saw and this was it says a mysterious type of Christ being about to cry your sin your nation to cut your nation in two and to raise those worthy of the honor to the everlasting kingdom along with the history patriarchs and prophets but he said that he will send others to the condemnation of the unquenchable fire along with similar disobedient and impenitent men from all the nations for they shall come he said from the west and from the east and from and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven for the children of the kingdom shall be cast into the outer darkness this is Matthew chapter 8 verse 11 and 12 now Justin continued to say that the Samaritans not only trusted Simon brethren but also believed that he was a God above all power and authority and might because he says and I have and I have mentioned these things taking nothing whatever into consideration except the speaking of the truth and refusing to be coerced coerced by my one even though I should be worth with uh, I should be worth with torn in the pieces by you for I gave no thought to any of the people that is the Samaritans which I had a communication in writing with Caesar I stated that they were wrong in trusting to the magician Simon of their own nation who say they who they say is God above all power and authority and might end of the quote you might be interested but in the 4th century church historian Eusebius also wrote of the influence that Simon Magus had in the 1st century he said Simon was at that time so celebrated and had acquired by his jugglery such influence over those who were deceived by him that he was thought to be the great power of God but at this time being amazed at the wonderful do and the wonderful deeds wrought uh, wrought by Paul uh, sorry this time where am I Yes, but at this time being amazed at this at the wonderful deeds wrought by Philip through the divine power, he pretended faith in Christ, even going so far as to receive baptism. And what is surprising, those who follow his most impure heresy do not do the same thing even to this day. For they, out of the memory of their forefather, slipping into the church like a pestilential and leprous disease, greatly afflict those into whom they are able to infuse the deadly and terrible poison uh, concealed in themselves. The most of these have been expelled as soon as they have been caught in their wickedness, as Simon himself 
when detected by Peter received the merited punishment. End of the quote. When the Simon was well known, it is evident, even during the three days of Jesus Christ's public ministry. Now, since Simon began to move for power following the death of John the Baptist, he was performing his phony mir- miracles in Samaria and at the same time that Jesus was performing his real miracles in Judea and in, in Galilee. But yes, Jesus and the Twelve have never come into contact with Simon, even though Jesus traveled through Samaria, uh, as we can see in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 3 to 43, and in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 17. Now, their con- contact with the Samaritan, with the Samaritans, well, it seems to have been limited, limited to the poor and the Now, when Jesus sent the twelve out by two by two to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out the demons, he instructed them not to go to Samaria, but to go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 through 8, thus postponing conflict with Simon until after they had received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. When he sent the seventy out two by two before his face into every city, and, uh, and and place where he himself was about to go. We see that in Luke chapter 10 verse 1. They also went to Tyre and Sidon in Phoenicia or Tyre and Sidon in uh, Phoenicia and to the cities of northern Galilee like uh, Luke chapter 10 verse 13. Let's see Luke 10 verse 13 uh, I'm looking now for where the Bible is oh. Luke 10 here we are Luke 10 and uh, what did we say we said uh, verse uh, 17 Verse 17. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Indeed. And so, uh, Jesus and the Twelve never came into contact with Simon, even though Jesus traveled through Samaria. And their contact with the Samaritans seems to have been limited to the poor and the sick. When Jesus sent the Twelve out two by two to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out demons, he instructed them not to go to Samaria, but to go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but indeed, thus postponing conflict with Simon until after they had, they have had received the Holy Spirit at their Pentecost, of course. Now when he saw that 70, uh, the 70 out two by two before his face, into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Uh, they went to Tyre and Sidon in Phoenicia and to cities in northern Galilee, like we see in Luke chapter 10, verse 13. Luke 10. Verse 13. 10, 13. Alright. Verse 13. And it says, Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to Bethsaida, for if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have had, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. So, uh, so, he went to Northern Galilee. Simon, you know, Simon went to, uh, went to Northern Galilee. 
We have just read in Luke 10, 13. And uh, we have no record of uh, those followers of his having contact with Samaritans. Perhaps they had already returned from their mission, who knows, before Jesus made his last journey to Samaria on his way to the uh, on his way to Jerusalem. Now, about a year before Jesus was crucified, and uh, the Jewish heads got very angry with him over all the things he was saying. He claimed to be the source of the living water during a solemn occasion of the Feast of Tabernacles in John chapter 7, verse 37, 38, and 39. He claimed to be the light of the world in John chapter 8, verse 12. He also claimed to be God who had come down from heaven, John 8, verse 23 through 30, and John 6, verse 51 through 58. Jesus was had also been seeing, he had been also been uh, saying that he was God, who had come down from heaven. Now when the Jewish leaders were debating with Jesus, they said to him, Do not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon. This is John chapter 8 verse 48. Now what they were implying was they thought actually that Jesus was just another follower of Simon Magus, who had recently been exalting himself a few miles away in Samaria. Just look the level of deception, brethren. And about a year earlier, the Pharisees had accused Jesus of casting out demons by Belzebub, the ruler of the demons, in Matthew 12, verse 24. So Simon, using his magic arts, did many miraculous things, and the Pharisees may have recognized Simon's power as coming from Satan, and therefore they accused Jesus as being linked to Simon. <laughs> and then, of course, you know that Simon tried to purchase the Holy Spirit, and you know that all of this... Deception is amazing. But you see, even the Pharisees, the, the, those religious leaders of this time, were being accused. You see, accused were being deceived, that is, and accused Jesus Christ of being connected with Simon. Well, what was Simon Magus, the magician? So, what might happen even in our days and age, the same might happen to us. So, we need to be analyzing these things in order to be well informed and well educated.